In this section, we are going to learn about taxation for traders and investors. Now, if you are investing into equities, it could be in many forms. You may be buying futures and options. You may be into intraday trade or you may be an investor or a trader who is investing into equity, holding them for some period, earning either short term gains or long term gains or doing it as a business. Now, let's go over these various types of trading and understand how income tax deals with them. Let's talk about futures and options first. If you're into futures and options, the income tax says that you are doing a business. So anyone who's into futures and options, irrespective of what their frequency of trade is or what the volume of transactions are like, you may be even dealing with it in it occasionally, but you will be considered as a trader or and your income will be reported as a business. Now, when you earn a business income, whatever expenses have been incurred to earn this earn that business income will be eligible for a deduction. Uh, as a futures and options trader, you can claim uh, the depreciation of your laptop, you can claim your telephone expenses if you're using the phone to make those trades, you can even claim uh, the services of a person you may be using to do the transactions or to do reconciliations. You can then report this income in your tax return under the head business and profession. There may be a situation where you may have earned a loss. So if you have a loss from futures and options, you're allowed to set off that loss from your other incomes except salary income, right? So uh, let's say you had a loss of uh, rupees 2 lakhs from futures and options. You can set off that loss. You can set off that loss from any rental income you have or income from other sources, basically any of the other incomes except salary income, right? So that's about futures and options. Now let's talk about intraday trade. Now, if you are a person who's into intraday trading, your activity is called speculative business, primarily because this trade is done without actual delivery of equities. So all intraday traders will have to report their activity as a business, as a speculative business. Again, you're eligible to claim all the expenses you've incur incurred, but it's important to understand why this is speculative and why uh, other businesses may be non-speculative because if you have speculative income then you're not allowed to set off from other incomes you can only set off speculative losses from speculative income so the bifurcation is very important remember that if you are an intraday trader all your activity will be classified as business income and because it is speculative in nature the set off of losses will only be available against speculative incomes now let's go to the third category, which is that of a trader or an investor. <laughs> now there's certain subjectivity involved in understanding how this happens. Say if you're a person who's into equities and uh, you hold them for a longer period of time and uh, you exit after a substantial period after having seen certain increase in value versus a person who's actually holding them for short term gains and making uh, quick money, selling them within two or three days or weeks or months and not really holding them to gain from the appreciation in value, but more from daily price fluctuations. There, there will be a bifurcation in how these two incomes will be treated. Somebody who has a high volume of transactions and a high frequency of transactions will be classified as a trader or a business and somebody who's holding them to gain from the increase in value and does not have a high frequency and does not have a high volume will be classified as an investor. Now, why is this bifurcation important? If you're classified as a trader, your income is business income and you're eligible to claim all the expenses. And if you're an investor, which means you're holding on to the equities for gain from appreciation in the value and do not have high frequency, in that case, all your gains will be classified as capital gains. Now these gains, uh, which are capital gains, could be short term gains or could be long term gains. If you have short term gains, then you'll pay a 15% tax on your gain. And if you have long term gain from equities, uh, which, has, uh, which, is, which was exempt uh, until financial year 17-18, but starting from 1st April 2018, any exits from a long term capital equity will be taxed at the rate of 10% if your total long term capital gain uh, from equities exceeds rupees 1 lakh. So be mindful that you will now have to pay tax on the long term gain that you have if you are an investor. Now this classification actually, like I said, is very, very subjective, but be mindful that you do not change the methodology based upon tax suitability. 
So if you've decided that you are a trader, then continue to follow that policy in your tax returns until there has been a specific change and you know that you are no longer a trader, but you're going to hold on to your securities as investment. Similarly, if you are an investor, do not change your methodology in the next year because you want to claim more expenses. So the intention has to be that you do not want to evade taxes, firstly. And secondly, there has to be consistency in your approach because the bifurcation between being treated as a business and a capital gains uh, investor is actually very subtle uh, or I should say it's actually very, very subjective. So be careful how you choose these. An important aspect of these classifications as a business or as a capital gains is that when you become a business, there are certain other conditions that you need to fulfill. A business man must maintain books of accounts, a business must get an audit done. So let's talk about these aspects. It may be an eye opener to you if you are into trading that you may have to maintain books of accounts. Now what are books of accounts? A books of accounts uh, simply means that you have support, you have documents to support whatever income has been earned and documents to support the in expenses which have been incurred. Now, uh, the income tax Depart uh, law does not actually specify what these books of accounts are, but I would assume something like a cash ledger, a general ledger, a profit and loss account, a balance sheet, and a record of all your receipts and all your expenses must be maintained by any business. But the income tax law has specified certain conditions where it is mandatory to maintain books of accounts. You must maintain books of accounts if your total income for a financial year exceeds rupees one and a half lakhs, right? The limit earlier was 1.2 lakhs, but has been increased from financial year 1617 to one and a half lakhs. So if your income as an FNO trader or as an intraday trader or as a, a trader who's into equities is in excess of one and a half lakhs for a financial year, then you must maintain a books of, books of accounts. The other condition is, uh, which is that if your sales or total receipts are in excess of rupees 25 lakhs, then you must maintain books of accounts. So if you meet any of these two conditions, it is mandatory for you to keep books of accounts. What are those books of accounts has not been exactly specified, but I would say these books of accounts are something that would help an income tax officer arrive at the same balance sheet and PL that you would with the help of these supports. So make sure you do have these records. Uh, if you are asked a question, you are able to support your claims. The other bit is that some people who may be traders may have opted for the presumptive scheme. The presumptive scheme allows you to show your income as 8% of your total receipts. Now this is an interesting uh, aspect because you are a trader and you are taking benefit of the presumptive scheme. The benefits of presumptive scheme are that you do not need to maintain uh, books of accounts. But uh, it goes without saying that if you're running a business, having certain records, which could be electronic or in the paper format, is actually very helpful. So uh, whether you're doing a presumptive business or a regular business, make sure that you have your books of accounts ready with you. Now, the next important aspect uh, of uh, business for a trader could be whether an audit is applicable. Usually we hear about audits only in the context of companies which are incorporated, but even a business which may be run by an individual may be subject to audit. The income tax law says that if your total turnover is in excess of rupees two crores, then you must get an audit done. An audit means that you engage a chartered accountant and hand over the books of accounts and the chartered accountant will review those books of accounts and he will give you a certificate that your accounts have been audited. And this certificate has to be then uh, also shown to the income tax department has to be there, uh, has to be put up online so that uh, they know that the accounts have been properly audited. So when we talk about the turnover limits for applicability of an audit or for books of accounts, we have to understand what turnover means because calculating turnover for, for a business may be easy and simple because all that they need to do is add up their sales. But what do you do if you are a futures and options uh, trader or if you are an intraday trader? In these cases, you must add the total of all your positives and negative trades without considering the negative value. So just sum up your trade values, that will be your turnover and see if it meets the threshold. An important part of supporting documents for a trader is broker credit notes. So make sure your broker is providing you these notes and these will serve as uh, books of accounts, as supporting documents to support the income that you've reported in your tax return.